Notre Dame hosting Louisville. So Notre Dame come out ranked 16th, Louisville ranked 15th. And talking about bet online right now, that line is minus six and a half Notre Dame over under 47 and a half. Gone up. Well, if you look at how sluggish Notre Dame has been in the passing game, I mean, you look at Riley Leonard's pass numbers, they are winning these games because they are running the ball, they can stop the run on defense, and Riley Leonard can create with his legs enough to be able to beat the Miami Ohio's, didn't beat Northern Illinois. We saw what they did against Texas A&M and really didn't throw the ball that well against A&M. And you want to give credit to Mike Elko and that defense, but this seems to be kind of a recurring problem for Notre Dame. And you're like, man, they got the, the talent you would think to get out of it. Because remember, before the season, we were like, this is kind of reverse Notre Dame. There's questions about the offensive line. They lost their phenom left tackle who was replacing Joe Walt. Uh, and they lost Blake Fisher as well to the NFL. He gets hurt. So you're like, all right, Notre Dame skill guys on the outside, they're going to be better. They're older. You got Riley Leonard in here. You should be able to throw it around. You're going to be damn good on defense. But David, that really hasn't been the case. Then you look at Louisville. And Louisville, what's their kind of bugaboo? It's been stopping the run. Now, they did hold Georgia Tech under 100 total yards rushing. I want to give them credit there. They do look like a complete team. But then offensively, Tyler Shuck has stayed healthy. I think he's got eight touchdowns, no interceptions. Jeff Brom's been very, very versatile with them. They're going to have a great plan for Notre Dame, but Notre Dame is so good on defense. This is a really, really tough game to bet for me. You know, you kind of want to lean Notre Dame because it's at home. You feel like they're still more talented than Louisville. But if they're going to be one-dimensional and Louisville loads the box, they could be in this game in the fourth quarter. Not only that, but win it. Mm -hmm. Well, we knew when Riley Leonard came over to Notre Dame from Duke that the, the biggest wild plays for him there were in the run game. And he has certainly delivered on that front for the Irish. I have to say, I, I am a little disappointed at how ineffective they have been in the past game. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, that led directly to a loss against Northern Illinois, and that loss alone may keep them out of the playoff even if they win out. Uh, I was thinking about this for Louisville because every week we say with Riley Leonard, well, this could be the week that they really turn it on through the air, so he throws for 300 yards and rushes for 150. Like, You're like, all right, there's doing. the guy that we thought— but, Facing Louisville's defense and Ron English's defense isn't really the week that you're hoping to magically turn it on. And I was thinking about this, because Louisville just got over a win with Georgia Tech. What a great game that was to face Georgia Tech before you have to go on the road and play Riley Leonard in Notre Dame. I mean, if you were going to have a stand-in on your scout team, try and be Riley Leonard, like Haynes, Haynes King is that guy, and may even throw it better. So what Louisville's defense just did against Georgia Tech and how effective they were to be able to keep Haynes King from running all over them, I think that's a great precedent and a great early look for them to face Notre Dame. I got to say, man, the six and a half seems a little crazy to me. I, I, right now, I'm trying to decide if I want to take Louisville outright to win the game. I don't think it'd be a bad dog bet at all. Blaine, when you look at the minds here going up against each other, Jeff Brom on the offensive side mm -hmm. with a guy with the capabilities of Tyler Shuck, with an offensive line that seems pretty capable, with a deep backfield. And guys, and remember, Lacey's hurt. One of their best skill guys is out like six to eight weeks. I think it was a collarbone, shoulder, something like that. Uh, but Ja'Cory Brooks has stepped up. If I'm Ron English on defense, I'm going to load the box and make Riley Leonard beat me, you have to. get you in third and eight, and then start running my exotics, run, mix my coverages and things like that. If you're Marcus Freeman going against Jeff Brom this week, how tough is it to be able to put a plan together when Louisville has shown the ability and you know to be balanced, and you know that Jeff Brom is probably still, even though they have played Georgia Tech, got a lot saved in the bag for this one. Yeah, you know Brom's got a lot in the tank when it comes to play con. If you watch Louisville play, they've been somewhat vanilla. I don't think they've gone outside the box a lot, but the way this Louisville team's built, and we've talked about this, especially last year, is something we're not used to seeing, and that's defensively. You can go back to the Jackson State game. They gave up 130 yards rushing, and let me tell you this. Georgia Tech, from a rushing standpoint, Britton Key even said it after the game. They want to do what? Run the ball. Oh, that's who they are. And Louisville to come in and stifle that, okay, that only puts more belief in me from a misdirection and counter standpoint of what Georgia Tech does of what you're about to roll in against uh, against Notre Dame. Trust me, from a guy who bet the Notre Dame-Miami-Ohio uh, game, <laughs> Notre Dame did not look good on offense. Um, it's bad right now. I don't know what's happened with Riley Leonard from the throwing game, but it's almost anemic at this point. And I promise you, as many studs that you have on defense at Notre Dame, Louisville's going to find a way to get theirs from a schematic standpoint. That's what Brom does. So right now, I'm with David. If this game gets up to 7.5 plus 7.5, I don't know take how Louisville you don't take Louisville. Well, what's the over-under at? Is it 46.5? Yeah, it's... Um, hold on one second. Let me get back. Because this game just smells like an under. It, I mean, it's it, got 47. 47 and a half. Mm -hmm. It's what? 47 and a half. I love the under right now in this game because, I, again, 
And, and I, I want to give Louisville's defense credit. They gave up an early rushing touchdown, I think a 23-yarder to Haynes King to go down early and didn't panic. That's what you see with teams that are kind of older, right? Something may happen early, but they don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. They're able to adjust. So even if Notre Dame takes the open and drive right down the field, Riley Leonard hits him from 15 yards out, breaks a tackle, spins, flips on his head, sells a hot dog, and then scores, I don't think Louisville's going to panic. It, it's just, I'm, this Notre Dame defense is legit. Like, they're legit. And it's not just a bunch of big guys in the middle and they're okay behind it. They can run. And they're going to have a really, really good plan for this game. It's a fascinating game. I would not be shocked to see overtime at like 17 to 17. This, and I think this game's on Peacock, unfortunately. I, I think I saw that. Uh, but I can't wait for this one. I really can't. No, I agree. Good I agree. to chat. All right, let's go to... Dr. Rock Martin, what's up, man? He said, hey, guys, Louisville fan here. Right now, how do you think Brahms looking in his second year? And if they win this game, you really have to start talking about Louisville as a playoff team. For sure. Uh, it's, we talk about teams, you know, in the ACC that can win it. You know, everybody's talking about Miami, and they should be. Clemson's looked a lot better. Beat NC State to death. Virginia Tech doesn't look very good, and they got to play Miami this week. This Louisville team just beat. That's why the Georgia Tech one was so big. They're just going to hang around over there, right? Just keep doing what they're doing. It's it's balanced still is what it looks like to me. It feels like, and I know it's early in this year, and to go back to Blaine's point, Dr. Rock, last year the biggest surprise with Louisville was the defense, right? Jack Plummer would make catastrophic decisions, but the defense not only was really good in general, they would bail them out a lot, and that seems to have carried over. So this wasn't a flash-in-the-pan thing. Jeff Brom just inherited some guys. They were able to, to string the puppet together, and he was able to dance while the kids laughed. This is like who they are, and that should scare people more than anything because make no mistake, Jeff Brom is a witch when it comes to being able to, to diagnose. We talk about Petrino and some of these other guys. He's one of the best in the business at it too, and now he's got a quarterback in Tyler Shuck that, again, as we said, if he could stay healthy, the dude is a baller that nobody is talking about. And remember, Louisville will play Miami and they'll play Clemson. So you're going to have to win one of those games. And you get your shot, though. Off. I've and, got no and, problem and with that. And Clemson and Miami don't play in the regular season. Yeah. So Interesting. All right, let's go to Chad Melton. Chad, what's up? He says, if Notre Dame loses this game, does the heat turn up on the seat of Marcus Freeman? Because if you lose, you will not be getting in the playoffs. I think it does. And not just for that reason. It's because of who you lost to, and then even how you've looked in your wins. Like, you lose to Northern Illinois, all right, which, which is tough. I don't care how good Northern Illinois is. That should not happen at Notre Dame. But then you struggle with Miami, Ohio for a while, right? And if you lose this one, you're starting to think now, maybe this is, this is just the Marcus Freeman coach teams. Really good on defense. Can't figure it out on offense, even with Sam Hartman coming in one year. And now Riley Leonard... Who the hell? I mean, it doesn't get much better going to get quarterbacks out of the portal than what Notre Dame has done twice. Even hiring Mike Dembrock, you're like, all right, Dembrock is going to come in, and he's the one who can finally be the last piece of the puzzle to turn this Notre Dame team into an elite team. You've got Riley Leonard. We know what he can do. You've got returning guys at the skill position that you feel good about. Phase on. I can go through the list. But it still looks bad. So now it feels like a Marcus Freeman problem because you've seen Dembrock ball before. So when do we start hearing, if Notre Dame loses this game, Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer. Don't be shocked if Louisville does win. You start hearing more and more and more and more about Urban Meyer. And some people say, oh, Notre Dame would never hire Urban Meyer. And I don't want to cause a firestorm here, but let's not forget, it wasn't all rainbows and happiness with what went down with Brian Kelly at Notre Dame, too. I don't want to get into it, but I think Notre Dame wants to win, all right? And Urban Meyer would be a guy that would come in there and I think could get Notre Dame to where they feel like they should be and that they haven't been in a while, including going to play Alabama in the national championship game and watching Eddie Lacy walk in your house and eat all the food in your refrigerator and then kiss your wife and leave. So, <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Hey, do us a favor. If you hadn't hit that subscribe button, please do. We really appreciate you taking some time out of your day.